My name is uh, Michal Wozniak, although the internet knows me as uh, Ryszek. Um, I work for Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer, so I do anything related to communication security, data security and server management. The Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, it's, uh, it's an umbrella organization for um, investigative journalism um, media organizations across the globe. Uh, up until recently, we were mainly focused on, uh, on the Balkans, on, on um, Asia, on Russia. Um, however, we have, a, we, we've a, we have expanded uh, immensely last year and, and right now we're, we're a global um, thing, cooperating with uh, about 30 partners across the globe and a large number of different other NGOs, organizations, uh, etc. more loosely. The idea is that since crime and corruption are cross-border uh, things, right, um, th then investigative journalism that tries to investigate those has to be cross-border. But most organizations that do this are usually based in a country somewhere. So the idea is that we have to uh, help them cooperate and, and co like share information and work on reports, work, work on, on their articles together. Otherwise, they will not really be able to, to see the big picture and, and actually investigate the, the, the crimes and the people behind them. I'm responsible for basically all of the OPSEC training uh, for, this, uh, for this organization. Of course, we rely on other experts also but it is my responsibility to kind of get this together and, and make sure that we're all uh, moving towards, uh, towards using secure encrypted uh, you know, communication channels and, and other tools. On a regular basis, we do trainings for journalists we work with, uh, both uh, our friends in the organization, our colleagues in the, in the, employed by the OCCRP itself, and uh, journalists from other partner organizations um, and we do uh, OPSEC training, right? We're, we talk about email encryption with the GPG, we, we talk about um, uh, IM encryption, we talk about uh, secure VoIP, we, we talk about anything they need to actually do their job and co communicate in a way that does not put them or their sources in danger. I would say that, that journalists um, appreciate GNU-PG uh, very much and, and they, they do appreciate the um, once they understood that an email is just, you know, a postcard you send, right? Um, being able to put that postcard in an envelope and, and uh, you know, use GNU-PG to, to secure the information contained therein, uh, this is something that the, the journalists really, really uh, appreciate and, and use daily uh, because they do have an understanding of, uh, they have very good understanding of, of, of security requ requirements when communicating with, with uh, the sources when we're talking about the physical world, right? So when a journalist or reporter goes and, and talks to a source, they will make sure that they are not followed, for example, that, you know, if, if it's a very uh, sensitive source, they will make sure that it's hard for, for anyone to get the information from the meeting, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, so they, un they understand the dangers, they understand the, 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 the security problems. However, it was not obvious to them that this is the same uh, the, the case is that this is the same case in the internet, right? When communicating through email, right? That was completely opaque to them. And once that has been cleared, that has been inf like they have been informed about all the dangers that uh, that um, electronic communication carries with it. Um, GNU-PG became, as I said, GNU-PG became a, a tool of the trade. So not all sources know how to use GNU-PG. Uh, however, we have reached the point where some of our journalists, those who use it most, most extensively, those who work with sensitive sources most of the time, are able to teach their sources to use GNU-PG in a way that perhaps is not perfect, right, but it's workable and it's secure, right, which is extremely important in this, in this line of work because it is not possible and it is not possible for, for the tech team, for example, to go to Paraguay or, or to, to, I don't know, Azerbaijan and teach a source to use GNU-PG so that they can communicate with the journalist. I can honestly say that that um, Panama Papers wouldn't happen without GNU-PG, right? This uh, I don't know how that worked on the on the on the source or, or whistleblower level. I don't know how the reporters communicated with the whistleblower, but um, I know for a fact that GNU-PG was uh, one of the very important tools that reporters and journalists 
working on Panama Papers after the leak uh, were using all the time to communicate, right? The, the communication was always encrypted with, uh, with GNU-PG. So, uh, so um, yes, the Panama, Paper, Panama Papers would, wouldn't, wouldn't have happened probably without, without GNU-PG, or at least GNU-PG made a large contribution to this. I don't have a particular story to share. I don't have a situation where, uh, I don't know, um, a, a organized crime uh, figure or a corrupt politician tried to go after our journalist and, and then they were, they were thwarted by encryption. Uh, uh, but, um, but I do strongly believe that had we not been using GNU-PG all of, all of this time, many of our sources and many of our journalists would be in danger or in jail. Um, we are cooperating with journalists and sources in, in uh, different stands or jans of this world and, and uh, many of our journalists have been in jail uh, in, in the past. So it is, um, GNU-PG is a crucial part of our infrastructure, is a crucial part of, of the toolset of, of a journalist working for us. Other organizations are getting to the same point, that they, they are able to use GNU-PG. Uh, and I do believe that this does save butts uh, all, all around, right? Because suddenly getting into somebody, uh, somebody's mailbox is simply not enough.